All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to See the Stories. Now, before we go further, I have a question for my friend here, Messi. Do you know a lot about autopsy? Um, not so much, to be honest with you. Uh, remember in the previous segment, we did yeah. talk about the autopsy of yeah. Jane Doe, which is a horror film. Yes. But I don't know exactly like the specifics of how autopsies work, mm -hmm. how um, forensic pathology works yeah. in general. So I'm really curious about. Uh, the, the techniques and the knowledge behind it. Yeah, that's right, Messi. I think we've seen this a lot in movies like FBI sort of movies, mm -hmm. cops movies, right? Yeah. So sometimes we can be interested in a field of profession without actually knowing much details about it. Now let's take a look at a relatively obscure field of work, namely forensic pathologist. In cases of a suspicious death, a forensic pathologist is charged with determining the cost and manner of death. In the United States, each state has its own regulations governing what constitutes a forensic case and each has a system to accomplish the task of forensic pathology. Many states have the medical examiner system in which a city or county will have a chief medical examiner who must be a physician. The chief medical examiner will, in turn, have a number of associate medical examiners who perform the actual duties of forensic pathologists. Meanwhile, other states have a coroner system in which the chief officer may not be a physician but employs forensic pathologists to carry out necessary duties. And to find out more, we already have, uh, let's welcome forensic pathologist and medical legal consultant, Dr. Evi Untoro, and forensic medicine specialist, Dr. Nurul Aida in the studio. Uh, Dr. Evi, Dr. Aida, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, my first question is for Dr. Evi. Uh -huh. Can you explain what, uh, forensic, what a forensic pathologist is and how a typical day in your profession looks like? Okay, a uh, forensic pathologist is the doctor who are specialists in forensic and then we, we do uh, to finding the cause of death of the, uh, that person. But uh, we also, in Indonesia, we learn about, the, we call it forensic medicine. Okay. So we're learning also clinical forensic medicine cases and also the pathology cases. Mm. For the pathology, we're working on the, uh, we divide it to uh, see the natural and unnatural cause of the death. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also the identification, uh, example for the disaster cases. Mm -hmm. And our daily practice actually, we, we are also a lecturer in our university. So it's just like mm -hmm. that. If I also have uh, emergency cases in the uh, ER room, also I can, and can go there to, mm -hmm. to uh, do the examine the patient as well for okay. the living and the deaf people. Okay. And you both work in pathologies field of work, but Within that, in the different field of work, can you explain a little bit what's the difference uh, between you two? For actually, both of us is the same, but uh, in this uh, cases, I would like to uh, uh, talk about more in, uh, for me, in, in pathologies, we mm -hmm. do uh, the death cases. Mm -hmm. We looking for the manner of death, the mechanism of the death, and then the cause of death of the person. Mm -hmm. It's just natural and unnatural. Mm -hmm. if it, Sometimes we have the insurance cases, mm -hmm. we call it forensic clinical cases and then the clinical autopsy to do to find the cause of death of the sudden death of the person. Mm -hmm. So the insurance claim can be paid okay. to the person or the, to the family. Mm -hmm. So and also in uh, identification of the disaster, mm -hmm. such as in uh, airplane crash mm -hmm. or in landslide mm -hmm. or in uh, moon eruption. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the people missing, we can mm -hmm. found it and then we 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 compare it the from the antemortem data and the postmortem data and if it's match then identify and then we mm -hmm. can release to the family mm -hmm. and then dr aida will talk about the forensic clinical medicine okay. mm. yeah. the clinical forensic uh, dealing with uh, living persons mm -hmm. and we examine uh, the medical uh, state of the victims mm -hmm. okay. uh, Sometimes involved in criminal cases like mm. uh, uh, criminal assault, rape, mm. uh, child abuse, domestic mm. violence, and the victims from the traffic accidents. Okay. And sometimes we also involve in uh, testimony for the perpetrators mm. when want to be uh, detained mm -hmm. or interrogated. Mm. So uh, the forensic doctors not only dealing with the dead person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes okay. they, uh, the public, mm -hmm. make a mistake 
stigma. Yeah. Forensic right. yeah. doctors yeah. only dealing with that person mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. We also do the uh, examination from the living person. Mm -hmm. uh, this times uh, mostly uh, on domestic violence, yeah. child abuse, yeah. okay. uh, like uh, sodomy. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, with children mm -hmm. from little age mm -hmm. to younger teenagers, like that. So it's even more important, or is if not equal to forensic of the dead people, of doing forensic to the to those cases that we've seen a lot right now in our society. Right? Yes. Right. But that means that both of you, uh, both of your professions, uh, work with uh, uh, criminal investigations, mm -hmm. and particularly uh, to Dr. Evie, pathologists do as well, and determine the causes of death, particularly in your uh, case or in your work, yeah. in your line of work. Could you elaborate on how uh, pathologists fulfill this role? Okay. First is when we found uh, the dead person, then the, the police as investigator will send it to us, to the mortuary, mm -hmm. and then we looking for the document. Is it uh, 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 already been uh, asking from the investigator to do the external examination? or the external and internal examination, it means autopsy. So uh, when we read it and then we do the examination, we could divide it, uh, we, we read from the cases, is it because of the accident or the work accident or the suicide or intoxication okay. or because the uh, homicide. So uh, uh, we, uh, we do what the police ask us, but before that we talking to the family to understand, to the family to understand that we will do the examination to the that person which is their family, mm. like that. So and then after that we do the sampling of the laboratory, even from the organ, we take it a little by little that having a damage on it and then we put it into the laboratory to see from the slide the histopathology sampling and then also if there is a case of we suspect intoxication then we take the toxicological sampling, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So in the United States, from what I understand, mm -hmm. when there is a suspicion of criminal uh, act in the death of somebody, the, it is, it is uh, important or even it is mandatory mm -hmm. to do an autopsy. Is yes. it the same in Indonesia as well? Yes, actually in 133 KUHAP, it's mm -hmm. mandatory for the police to ask us to help them uh, investigation in the cases. Okay. okay. Now, I would like to go to Dr. Nurul. What's the process in your field? Um, you're dealing with living person and ongoing cases, right? So, what is the typical cases that you found and what is the process like? Okay, like I mentioned before, like uh, cases on domestic violence, mm -hmm. child abuse, or even the criminal assault. We, uh, same with Dr. Effie said, uh, uh, the police mm -hmm. usually uh, send the victim mm. with the uh, re uh, report mm -hmm. and also the request letter mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. uh, so after that, we examine. Mm. Uh, first time we do the uh, interview, mm -hmm. we ask what happened, the chronological, mm -hmm. and sometimes is it uh, repetitive mm -hmm. in domestic okay. violence or even in child abuse. After that, we go the general examinations mm. from head to toe, mm. the vital sign. Mm. And sometimes we do the uh, laboratory findings or even radiology. Mm -hmm. We uh, examine the wound. After that, we decided what treatment is the best from them. Sometimes we elaborate or uh, do the interpersonal collaborations with the uh, psychiatrists, mm -hmm. psychologists, and sometimes OBGYN mm -hmm. on assault, yep. uh, sexual assault, and sometimes with pediatrics mm -hmm. on child abuse. Okay. After that, all the facts, mm -hmm. all the facts, we, uh, the forensic uh, doctors wrote mm -hmm. on visum et repertum. We call it visum et repertum, uh, and we conclude mm -hmm. all the facts. And the conclusions consist the degree of the injury, mm -hmm. and that one. Uh, used by the police to uh, determine mm. which article from KUHP mm -hmm. okay. uh, to be charged to the perpetrators. Like okay. What do you say is the biggest challenge that you find in doing the work? Because it's not easy to get something out of the victim. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the victims uh, report late. Mm. Right. Not after the accident, not after the uh, tragedy, mm -hmm. they report it. Sometimes after a week, mm -hmm. a month, so the 
what is it, the fact, the injury already healed. Mm. Okay. Sometimes in the sexual assault, there is no other, uh, what is it, uh, evidence mm -hmm. we found. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us. Mm -hmm. We want to help the victims, but yeah, psychological, mm -hmm. the victims, mm -hmm. they keep silent. Mm -hmm. Or even if there is a witness, yeah. the witness also keeps silent about mm. it. Now, I've heard of a concept called uh, the silent witness as well in domestic violence cases. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how pathologists can discover them? Yeah, uh, usually we deal with the victims. Okay. Uh, the victims keep silent because of the psychological. Mm -hmm. And domestic violence, we know that the perpetrators and the victim is in the same res residential yeah. in okay. their house. Yeah. And sometimes the witness also, like their children, mm. the domestic assistants, or even the parents. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, they keep silent because of the perpetrators usually use their power and control. Okay. Like using threats, yeah. verbal, or economically yeah. uh, dependence. Yeah. So the witness keeps silence. Yeah. And sometimes also, the uh, witness or even the victims didn't know that they, uh, the perpetrators assault them. Mm -hmm. Usually verbal, mm -hmm. right. neglect, and also the provision of liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the victims and uh, the witness also, not in the city, mm -hmm. They don't know where to report. Yes. They don't know where to report. And sometimes they also think that after I report, where do I have to go? Yeah. yeah. Because the perpetrators is in their house. Yeah. So we need the, what is it, safe house. Yeah. Does Indonesia provide those sort of places, safe houses? In the city, okay. not in a rural area. Okay. okay. Hard. In your case, does do you have some sort of task force in in a much more serious cases to sort of give protection for the victims to uh, solve the uh, the case and the uh, inspection? Yes, uh, the police they have their uh, expert, uh, but uh, others and uh, from the Ministry of uh, Women Empowerment, mm -hmm. they have also uh, some uh, institute to give uh, support, psychological, mm -hmm. safe house, mm -hmm. we call it uh, P2TP2A, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. like that. So uh, and some uh, community mm -hmm. uh, base also give the, the support, mm -hmm. like LSM, mm -hmm. uh, they concentrate from uh, for uh, women and mm -hmm. also child. They give support. Okay. Okay. And Dr. Evi, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned earlier that as part of your investigations, you seek uh, indicators or evidence that you uh, look for. Can you tell them? Can you tell us exactly uh, what it is you're looking for? And I'm curious mm -hmm. whether you do like an open autopsy or just mm. looking at the surface. Yeah. Because yeah. we've seen a lot of those in movies, I right? <laughs> there are differences as well, aren't there? Yeah. So yeah, actually, sometimes we were called to the scene, the crime scene. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, okay. but sometimes they also consult by the video call, mm. and then uh, we can uh, give them the clue. You have to take this, take this, like mm -hmm. in suicide or hanging. We we have uh, asked the the investigator or the police to take care of the rope. Right. So we can know is it hanging or not hanging or strangulation. So we have to divide it that. And then after uh, the, the, that body are in our uh, mortuary, we do the external examination. And if there is a sample or, or the body have us, uh, on the shirt having something stained, right. that we think it might be uh, we took the sample, if there is a blood or there, there is a knife mm -hmm. and the crime scene, we can make, make it match. Is it from the perpetrator blood or from the dead person? Right. So from the external, we can take so many samples from it. And also we took uh, uh, take a look of the wounds mm. and everything. If, uh, the, the, uh, if we're not going to the crime scene, we can see from the external examination, is it uh, any bushes or any leaves? We, we, at least we can imagine uh, from where this uh, dead body is taking from. Mm -hmm. Is it from the bushes? or from the forest or from the swamp. Mm. So, uh, and then we take a look from the head to toe, mm. the external examination. And then after that, uh, after we took uh, some samples from the stain and something, and then we took the blood and the urine, about 20 cc from it. 
and then we uh, just put it in the laboratory. And also, we, if the police investigator asking for the autopsy, internal autopsy, uh, internal examination, then we will open mm -hmm. from here mm -hmm. until the pubic. Mm -hmm. And then in, uh, also we open the head, mm -hmm. the okay. skull. Mm -hmm. we, we took a look at the, the brain. We took a look in the internal organs, such as mm -hmm. the heart, the lungs, and also the GI tract, mm -hmm. the intestine, and also for the reproductive system and the hip uh, area for the organ and also the mm -hmm. kidney. Okay. So we, we take a look for the whole system, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is, is it because of the trauma mm -hmm. or because of the other cause mm -hmm. that is not related with the cases. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to look at all. Mm. And then we took some samples, of course, from the organ that damage, such as if there is a, a heart attack, mm -hmm. we can took the little bit two centimeter square mm -hmm. for the heart, which is damaged to mm -hmm. fibrosis and others. And also if uh, there is a, a drowning cases, we took from the uh, lungs to see is it any diatoms inside there. Okay. If we found the diatoms, we found the plan in the, in the water plan. So we know this person is dying because of drawing. Not so, because of any yeah. trauma. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so we have to look it for all. If this person is dying because the alcohol intoxication mm -hmm. or not, so the whole system. Is it really true that forensic can actually uncover the real cause of that? Which means that if someone got uh, 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 someone died by murder, mm -hmm. then you would definitely be able to find the cause and then the person at fault. Yeah, uh, sometimes there is no one anything. If uh, this person is died because uh, there is intoxication of the sleeping pills mm -hmm. too okay. much, mm -hmm. we cannot see any. But when we took the sample and we found the substance, and we can know is this substance is overdose, is a lethal mm -hmm. dose for this person or not. Mm -hmm. So even though there is no one, on the dead body, but when we took the sample and we look it completely uh, one by one as detail, mm -hmm. we can we can at least we can found. So the pr principle is as soon as possible mm. we have to do the examination. Okay. If there is the delay or maybe after uh, the buried and then we exhume, it sometimes is a little bit difficult, mm. but we try our best. So it's the same principle yeah. with Dr. Yeah. Nurul's case, yeah. right? And in your case, Dr. Nurul, uh, what kind of uh, techniques do you need to do in order to find the truth? Because sometimes the victims may also be able to say false uh, statements, but as a forensic, you need to find the truth from the uh, proof, right? So yeah. what kind of techniques do you use? Yeah, uh, in adult case, uh, in domestic violence, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, a general practitioners uh, found uh, the, fa uh, the victims and they come to the ER mm. as a patient. Mm. They say, I fall, mm. I trip from right. the stairs. Yeah. But if we examine, that's not the place mm. because of the accidents. Mm. So we barely uh, uh, found the fact and sometimes we encourage mm. the patients mm -hmm. to tell the truth. Mm. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we have to separate mm -hmm. her with the uh, husband, yeah. so she'll, she'll tell the, the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes we have difficult also uh, children. Mm. They keep silent mm. because, because they're the scared fear. of their parents. Yeah, yeah, they fear. So we have to gain. Uh, report mm. to them playing first mm -hmm. after that they tell one by one mm -hmm. after that they uh, want to co collaborate with mm -hmm. us we can examine mm -hmm. especially on genital area mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have traumatic it's hard and sometimes i am a mom yeah yeah it's yeah. what is it emotionally yeah. Yeah. yeah like that also a woman ourselves right yeah. so we understand yeah. and it's very but we have to be professional yeah, yeah. Put aside the emotions, yeah. keep it professional. And sometimes uh, they uh, uh, secret mm -hmm. about the wound. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, encourage them to open. And sometimes we do the uh, examinations using camera, mm -hmm. using UV light mm -hmm. to find the bruises, the uh, late uh, bruises. 
sometimes with uh, our, our own eyes, mm -hmm. we didn't see. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with the camera, we can see okay. all the bruises with different age of one, mm -hmm. sometimes like that. And can you tell us a little bit, both of you, about some misconceptions about you know, your career and, and your lines of work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the autopsy. Yeah, a general public uh, uh, stigma still. Yeah. If we do the autopsy, we took the organs, yeah. mm -hmm. we don't put it back. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. We don't ha we don't need the organs. Yeah. yeah. They they uh, they tell us you will sell the organs to others. No. If we want to donate the organ, we have to cons uh, the deceased have to consent. Right. The family have to consent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like that. And sometimes uh, the stigma, mm. yeah, us in um, Muslim majority, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't hurt the disease. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but one thing, we do the autopsy. Autopsy is for the disease. Yeah, yeah. We give uh, what is it? Uh, justice. Justice, justice mm -hmm. yeah. for her or for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes the perpetrators is mm. close to us, mm. the family. They might want to influence yeah, the decision. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, like Dr. Effi said, oh. the autopsy didn't need family consent. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory from the police. Mm -hmm. Anything okay. to add, Dr. Effi? Yes, uh, yeah, like uh, Dr. Aida said that uh, people thinking that we do the autopsy, we cutting. <laughs> we cutting yeah. all the, 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 the extremity yeah. and others. And also, uh, we have to tell them that the organ mm. uh, think they're thinking about first is collection mm. for the education for the study for the mm. uh, practitioner we said it's not we have to ask for the concern and then the second they're thinking about that we took the kidney and then we can transplant to others mm. but actually it's not the kidney should be in the living person mm. so we have to move it but but for the heart we, it also see, uh, should be uh, two hours after the death mm. and it should be storage in the, the proper way mm. yeah. uh, before we transplant to others. So they're thinking that we took the organ for uh, selling, for mm. selling the yeah. organs to transplantation, but actually it cannot. Mm. For only for the, the eyes, the cornea, it's uh, 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 about uh, the delay about six hours, right. but we have to put it the water uh, uh, to make mm. it still good. Mm. And then the heart is maximum is two hours. Mm. So the other things is none. So yeah. it's not possible. Yeah, and not the possible. main thing is for the justice of the fact. Yes. And the, the, uh, donating organs can also save other people in return yes. as well. Uh, Dr. Aida, Dr. Uh, Effie, thank you so much for your time and coming to the studio yeah. uh, for the interview. Very interesting conversation. Very insightful. And thank you for shining a light on forensic and the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyway, that was our conversation with them. But don't go anywhere because see, the stories will continue after the break. So stay with us on the three-hour news show only on See Today.